So here we're going to look at the, uh, the Sony Mavica cameras and I'm now going to look at the uh, FD73. The FD73 was uh, introduced in early 1999. Uh, in a way it was kind of a sort of a cut down camera. I'm not quite sure what it cost me but I wouldn't have thought it was particularly cheap. Um, first thing is it's a little bit more compact than the uh, FD7 which it was sort of replaced. As you can see there, you know, it's still a chunky sort of camera but um, it does actually feel quite quite smaller in its design just boot that boot it up for a second and uh, well it's pretty much the sort of same as the um, FD7 to be honest um, same resolution 640 by 480 uh, the menu system is exactly the same although that you do notice that the actual menu now is more we've got more pixels and we've got a sort of much higher resolution menu system now. Um, as I said, the flash level can now be adjusted. So it now becomes a metered flash, and that was sort of quite important due to the er earlier camera's problem of actually bleaching out all the pictures with its flash. And pretty much record mode, normal quality, fine. Um, we can change the file number. Uh, disk tool, you can now actually format and copy your floppy disk if that's what you, which is I suppose quite you know quite a feature at the time and that just basically sort of concludes that we've still got the uh, rather sort of like interesting picture effects again negative art sepia and black and white and so solar eyes which I'm not quite sure that just sort of makes things a little bit kind of a pixelated and then we're sort of you know back to normal there uh, there's, there's no actual movie feature on this particular camera and also the manual focus lens um, is missing as well it's purely uh, an autofocus lens but that's, you know, that's, that's fine really um, it still has the rather impressive macro focus there if we go up to disc, there we go you can get that to focus down to one centimetre as well and you still have the uh, extremely impressive times ten optical zoom there's a little bit of trouble in focusing in here because we're obviously under artificial lightning in the shed. And uh, that's really about it. You know, as I say, it works pretty much as the other camera. Line up, take a picture. There we go, all, all recording. Has the um, times two, should say it somewhere, but it has the actual, here you go, has the, uh, the times two actual floppy disk write speed and that does make quite a difference that should cut the actual write speed down to probably about uh, three three seconds which you know that is, that is a fair difference really and just to actually um, file access there we go and uh, there's our flash picture it still is a little bit kind of bright but at least you know it's not completely washed out uh, like the earlier camera there we go, that's really, uh, that's really about it for the FD73. Quick look at the, uh, the Mavica FD83. Um, this was the bigger brother to the FD73. And I would imagine when these cameras were new, this one actually probably cost quite a bit more because it actually had MPEG movie capability, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So we boot this one up. Oh, there we go, it's actually saying it needs a disc. So we'll... Uh, Insert a disc. This just goes into the uh, standard floppy disk drive slot there. There we have this access, and that's it. We're ready to go. So, like I say, this actual camera has a uh, movie capability, and uh, you know, quite a novel feature at the time. And I've actually recorded one a little earlier. Get to play there. There we go. Of about sort of ten seconds, uses up quite a little bit of uh, quite a little bit of actual display. And here we go. That's like the sort of uh, little movie there. Um, going through still functions, um, just the same as the FD seventy three really. Um, pretty much same. You've you've, you've got pro different program modes, um, incandescent there for indoors. Landscape mode, portrait mode, you know, so so on and so forth. Um, various things turn the display off. 
as I say, this camera actually um, was the first camera that offered a megapixel image. But it wasn't a true megapixel image, it still recorded basically in 640 by 480 and it was actually uh, interpolated which Sony, you know, I've been quite honest about it, if you can make it out on the camera there it says an in interpolated megapixel images. So, uh, but it did at least, you know, it did offer sort of a megapixel. Um, by, this, by this sort of stage, you know, the things were sort of starting to fall a little bit behind for Sony. I mean, already there was other makes that were offering up to two megapixel cameras already. Uh, the FD83 was introduced in March 1999. Still quite a heavy camera, 580 grams, 1.28 pounds. Um, two and a half inch screen now, which still looks quite small on this sort of size of camera. And uh, the lens itself, it um, does have the manual focus, which I think is always a, you know, a good, good feature. And that was one step up from the FD73. Um, but the zoom, unfortunately, um, they lost the 10 times zoom. Uh, this actually has a 3 times optical and a 2 times digital. So that's equivalent, I think, it's on a 35mm format. So that's 37mm to 111. So you lose out on that very large telephoto 400mm uh, lens. However, a few other nice features. You may notice we've got a rather like bright little light here. Well, what, what you could do with this camera to save battery life, and uh, on early digital cameras, battery life was always something that was quite sacred. You could switch the backlight off. Now, you obviously on the video you won't be able to see anything, but the actual image is still there, and in, in bright sunshine, that would actually reflect off the reflector, and uh, you'd be able to use the camera quite happily in bright sunshine without the backlight being on and that just saved you quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of battery power. Um, the LCD itself you can adjust the uh, brightness and you've got a volume control there which you can actually obviously adjust the volume control when you're actually recall playing back a MP4 movie. And also another feature on this camera which is that um, when you take a still image you can also take um, record a very short mp3 style audio clip which I assume probably when this was actually used in the professional market such as state agents and things I'm sure people had quite a bit of fun actually taking on a little message to when they sent these things around the office and uh, that's about it really but, um, let's switch the camera off I'll show you the battery that these cameras actually use like I say these, these actual batteries standard battery used in all Sony camcorders, um, still available today on the internet for about ten pounds. Um, but they're actually quite, you know, they're, they're quite resilient. This, this particular camera I, I bought here, and this one I actually bought for ninety-nine pence on the internet. And mainly, the, obviously, the person that was selling it um, didn't have a battery charger, so the camera was actually sold as um, not tested spares or repairs on, on eBay and it was a simple question simple thing for me just to basically take out the battery charge it up and it came back to life straight away so there are sort of you know quite a few bargains to actually uh, to actually be had and that's about it really I say on this particular camera again it's got a meet the flash is actually metered you can manually adjust the power of the flash so you don't get that sort of like washout on which was on the FD7 and you've got a little just microphone on the front there for recording your actual MP4 video clips and a small audio clip um, if you want to actually put one onto a still image. So that's, that's really about it. That's your uh, Sony Sony Mavica digital still cameras. As, like I say, today I need these cameras are really cheap at the moment. I mean, you know, um, no one's really sort of collecting them as, as yet. Like I say. I, all of these three cameras, each one is available for probably between five and ten pounds on on eBay. Um, if you're willing to sort of wait a while and take a chance, then you you know you say you can pick them up for less. Um, what I did and what I'd recommend you do is on the first camera that you buy is basically to get a boxed example, a little bit tatty here, but I actually picked up the FD73, came with a box. Um, full set of instructions and more important, importantly you get the charger um, which comes with it which once you've actually got the battery charger 
then there's no reason really why you can't take a chance like I did with this camera 99p um, and then when you get back pop the battery in charge and you know see if it works I was quite lucky this one worked but I think they actually are quite resilient um, even, the, even the very early cameras you see quite a few of these FD7s and the FD7 ones come up on eBay um, still fully functional they were certainly very very well made there we go, one, one day one day they'll probably be uh, in museums and God knows what else. Um, it's quite strange that you know we talk about vintage digital cameras that are only really 10, 11 years old now. But there we go. So that sort of concludes it. So as I say, at the moment, absolutely dirt cheap. Um, I, I'd say that get on eBay and get yourself a little bit of uh, digital camera history.